this video, I'd like to continue talking a little bit about blueprints and how they've changed in 5.x. One of the big things is, is if you look at some of the content in the Unreal documentation, even when they're talking about their blueprint user guide, one thing Epic did not do was update as far as their images for creating the assets are concerned. And while they're close, they are not identical. And this can, you know, create some issues for folks as far as, you know, placing blueprints, creating blueprints, etc. Now, when you're getting ready to start working with blueprints, what I've done here is I just made a blank level using the third person uh, template, put a player character in there. And so we just have nice, clean work environment where there's nothing in the environment here. When it comes to actually making blueprints though and working with blueprints, in a previous video I showed you, first off, one of the big changes was is they did change the icon. They made it more graph-like that it kind of mimics as far as what blueprints actually look like. So for example here, if I were to come into my blueprint folder in my content browser and right click, notice that I still have that blueprint class option, but the icon is different. And you can actually see differences too, since we now no longer say particle system and things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make a blueprint class. Now this part's actually still pretty similar though the icons have changed just a hair. One thing I tell students is whenever you're first starting out, honestly, the actor is as a parent class is gonna take you super far. Um, as you get more advanced, things such as pawns, uh, you know, or even other character elements, um, those will come into play. But really, as you're starting out, things like opening doors or having audio play or having, you know, uh, spawning locations, the actor's going to take you really far. Now, by default, I can just click on one of the common elements here. However, I do want to show down at the bottom here, and this can be a little intimidating. So if you're brand new to classes and creating blueprints, don't worry about this part. But as you get more comfortable, you can actually go through every single class in the Unreal Game Engine if you prefer and choose your specific type as far as your hierarchy goes for your class. I'm going to close that out now. And we're just going to go with an actor. And notice it makes a little node down here. So I'm going to say BP underscore and we're just going to do the age old hello world here. So that's what an actor blueprint looks like. It is a common practice when you're working with blueprints that we do put the BP underscore in front of it. So I'll go ahead and double click to open this. And as you can see, this is pretty much it. This is your blueprint. The main thing to point out is you are going to work heavily as you continue on on both the details panel here on the right hand side and the components on the left. More specifically in the components here as far as what is actually contained inside of the blueprint. Right now, it's just the blueprint itself, but that doesn't mean that it can't do anything. If I come over to the event graph tab, this is another spot that starting out, you're gonna spend a lot of time in. Event graphs offer three already pre-created elements on how the blueprint should react when certain things occur. For example, you have event tick, event begin play, but then event actor begin overlap. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and add in a new node here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add print, and we're gonna choose to add print text. The print text is a nice option because of the fact not only will it print it to your output log, but you'll also see it on the screen here. So I'm going to go ahead here and select this. This is the print text. Now the reason I'm capitalizing this here is because the first thing I want to talk about here as far as a general actor blueprint is we're going to work with event begin play. So I'm going to go ahead and connect, compile and save. And then we're going to just drag this out into the game environment. Now this may take a couple of tries, but I encourage you if you're following along, look in the upper left hand corner here whenever you load your game. So I'll go ahead and hit the play. 
and it was quick, but it did output this is the print text. However, notice there's no longer any interaction occurring here as far as between the event begin play and print text. This is a one-time occurrence, so if you need to load something when the level loads, the event begin play is a great choice. Let's stop the simulation now and let's actually switch it around a little bit. Another crowd pleaser as far as when you're working with blueprints in general is the event tick. Now, anytime that you want to disconnect something, you just right click on the arrow and you tell it to break this link. So let's go ahead and do an event tick instead. So I'm going to compile and save and we're going to run. Now this is much easier to see. You can see now it's just it's doing numerous ticks. You can actually see the interaction and this is often something that whenever you're working with actors and blueprints, this is pretty much how we visualize the connections. Instead of doing tons of different comments to make sure that functions are being hit from within classes, we instead have the connectors here showing that something is happening. So that's kind of the basics there as far as working with just a basic actor placed in the scene. Now, outside of that, you do have other methods for working with actors, one of which is you can tie a blueprint into an actor, such as an object, uh, that when a user interacts with it, uh, you can go in and work with it. But then also to friendly reminder, I talked about this in a previous video, but when you go under the blueprint options here, remember that you do have specific options as far as, for example, the third person game mode. You can also go in and edit things like the player controls or any pre-made blueprint classes that come with the game type you can come in and work with as well. So for this demo though, we just started with the basics and just looked at adding a connector between a blueprint and looking at its main interface as far as the different event options.